Good morning and welcome to our service. Um, we're back at St Peter's today. Uh, it's the 18th Sunday after Trinity and we're going to remember in our prayers all those who are struggling uh, in this pandemic. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's say the prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in a newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God. the collect for the 18th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us thy gift of faith, that forsaking that which is behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of thy commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He shall feed me in a green pasture, and lead me forth beside the waters of comfort. 
he shall convert my soul and bring me forth in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou shalt prepare a table before me against them that trouble me. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. But thy loving kindness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now we have the Old Testament lesson. The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 to 9. O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For thou hast made of a city a heap, of a defence city a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city, it shall never be built. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee, the city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, the branch of the terrible one shall be brought low. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees, well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from, from off all the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord, we have waited for him, we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
now we have the epistle. Reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, and beginning at verse 1. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with your dear, and I plead with Syntyche, to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, and whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. The Gospel is taken from Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 14. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants saying, Tell them they are bidden. Behold, I prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatling are killed and all things are ready to come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, 
and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burnt up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and gather together all as many as they find, and both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there was a man which had not a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then he then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall he be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Here endeth the gospel. Praise be to Christ. Hello everyone. When I was a young teenager, I had the privilege of appearing some 20 times on stage at the Royal Opera House Covent Garden. I had roles in four popular operas, including La Boheme, in which I had a singing part. Now this was in the 1960s while I was in school in North London. And how this came about is a long story and I have no intention of describing this here. Instead, I would like to share with you one memory. At the Opera House, during rehearsals, we were sometimes escorted from the stage to pass through a door that led directly into the stalls. And this door was normally concealed by a curtain and on it were the words, no admittance. If the public saw this door, their way was barred. They were forbidden to pass this way and mingle with the cast. Now during rehearsals I was allowed to use this door. I could join the singers and the actors and the manual workers on stage and I could occupy a seat in the huge auditorium. I mention this because everywhere we go there are doors that are barred to us and sometimes for some special reason we might be allowed access to a private or secluded area or meet someone important, but generally we are not. When the Israelites were wandering the desert, Moses, under God's instruction, supervised the construction of the tabernacle. Now this was a large tent with furnishings and God used this to teach the Israelites how they were to worship him. Now, some areas could only be accessed by certain people, but there was one section, the Holy of Holies, that was forbidden territory. This housed the Ark of the Covenant, and it was here in the Holy of Holies that God had his place among the people. And it was unsafe for anyone to go in. The only exception was the high priest, and he could only go in into the Holy of Holies on one day of the year. And this was the Day of Atonement. Now, before going in, the high priest had to perform specific rituals for himself and the people. And inside the Holy of Holies, he, he wore a bell so that priests who were outside could hear him moving about. And the high priest was also attached to a long rope. And this was fastened around his waist. 
So if the priest had a nasty accident or a heart attack or he dropped dead inside, the priests could pull him out. No one else dared to enter into God's presence. Such was God's almighty power and his majesty. Access was severely limited. Now, just in case anyone could make a mistake, the entrance to the Holy of Holies was covered by a veil. There was a huge curtain that hung in front. Now, many years later, in the temples in Jerusalem, which were built by Solomon and Herod, a similar, a much larger curtain separated the holy place from the Holy of Holies. Now, perhaps you're wondering, what has all this got to do with us today? Well, in the New Testament, the writer of Hebrews describes these earthly sacred places as being a copy of heaven. The tabernacle and the temple served as physical representations of worship in the heavenly realms. Now, the tabernacle and the temples had various deficiencies. They had to be repaired, they were limited geographically, they had restricted areas, and they only belonged to the nation of Israel. Now, Jesus came to change all this. Jesus came to remove the barrier between humanity and Almighty God. When Jesus died on the cross, the curtain in the temple was torn into two. It was ripped from top to bottom and exposed the Holy of Holies to everyone. This was a dramatic and symbolic act to show us that a new and living way was now open to everyone. In this world, we will always find doors to places that are barred to us. But as far as heaven is concerned, there is no barrier. Heaven no longer has a big no admittance sign outside. The way into heaven to be in God's presence is permanently open. It's permanently open to all who trust in the sacrificial death and resurrection of Jesus. Our eternal home is waiting for us. The door is open. We are free to go in. Thanks be to God. So we say our creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our churches of St Peter's and St John's, for the ministry teams who work so hard throughout the week to reach out to the community. 
We thank our congregations for visiting our churches, either in person or through listening to the video recordings. We give praise to the committees who are working hard to make the events in our church calendar happen in a safe way. We give thanks to all the volunteers who work so hard to keep the church grounds and memorial gardens clean and tidy. Lord, continue to guide our work and support all who are working with new rules in this challenging time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all nations, you showed the prophets, priests and the wise how to lead people. Teach us not to be afraid of anything that you have created, even if it may seem alien to us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that our leaders work with patience and clarity and resolve any differences for the good of all people. Where there is tension, let there be calm. We especially ask for our scientists to be guided into finding a cure for the coronavirus and other fatal diseases. We remember all those who have been affected worldwide who may not have the medical support that they need. All those with long COVID, a condition which has just been recognised by the doctors, may they be relieved of their pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of our lives, we pray for our communities, our neighbours, our colleagues at work and our friends and families. We pray for all those who are at risk of violence and abuse. We pray that your spirit of peace will protect the vulnerable, retrain the angry and bring comfort and new insight into the lives of those who feel trapped and alone. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, for members of our families who have died, those on our year's mind whose anniversary we recall. Help us experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us and the fellowship of the church family around us until we are reunited once more in your heavenly kingdom. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. We remember before God those who have died. May they rest in eternal peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all those who are frightened because they are ill. Reassure them and help them to have confidence in those with medical knowledge to diagnose illnesses and give care for the sick. Give them courage, hope and peace and the knowledge that you are present in their weakness, pain and suffering. We pray especially for those who have no one to help them that in their loneliness they may know that you are with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to live in gratitude for all that we have. May the new season bring peace, love and hope to all your children all over the world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Peace be with you.
be with you. And And also also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We We lift lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is is right right to give give thanks and praise. praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross and put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so far, the calling to mind is death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, will honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though Though we are are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take Oh, 
Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. We, we do not, not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls wash through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Please do receive communion now. Now my tongue the mystery telling of the glorious body sing, and the blood all price excelling, which the Gentiles, Lord and King, in a virgin's womb once dwelling, shed for this world's ransoming. Word made flesh, true bread he maketh, by his word his flesh to be, wine his blood which whoso taketh must from carnal thoughts be free. Faith alone, though sight forsaketh, shows true hearts the mystery. Let us pray. We give thee praise and thanks, Lord Jesus Christ, for the sacred feast, for here we receive thee. Here the memory of thy passion is renewed, here our minds are filled with grace, and here we are given a pledge of the glory to come, when we shall feast at that table where you reignest with all your saints for ever. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Father, Father of all, we, we give you thanks and praise, that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So last week we had our harvest festival and people brought lots of stuff. At St Peter's we filled up a huge um, a huge kind of uh, food bin for food bank um, uh, for in Sainsbury's and St John's uh, took theirs which was I believe a bootful to um, to the food bank in Redbridge thank you to everybody who brought gifts uh, let me encourage you if you haven't done so to make a, a little um, contribution towards them in money if you haven't done so in any other way thank you